How you doing there folks? Baiters here with another Top 10. Today we're going to look at the Top 10 Creation Club mods in Fallout 4. Now these mods might set you back a little bit financially, but hopefully they will complete you sexually. Remember if you like this video to smush down on that like button. Or if you're not feeling in the button pushing mood, then perhaps invite a friend over and have them push it for you. Honestly, I don't care how it happens, as long as I get those likes! Yeah! F*** yeah! Now go ahead and slowly unzip a bag of broken expectations, and let's get to average baiting, baby! At number 10, we've got Noir Penthouse by Tom Seddon, aka Bloodmeat08. A player home like this is so beautiful, it makes the vanilla player homes look like they were beaten out of an ugly goblin's butthole. Like someone seeing a mythical goblin creature uglying up the forest and then started hitting it uncontrollably with a piece of plywood. And just before the fugly freak lost all motor control and passed out, it sharded out the vanilla player homes. Yeah, that's how nice this player home is, right there. This mod adds a new player home to Fallout 4, unlike any other player home I've seen, mod or not. In the twilight where past and future meet, the Noir Penthouse provides a sanctum from the chaos of the Commonwealth. In layman's terms, that means it lets you poop with the door open. That's freedom and peace of mind right there. According to the lore, originally this place was used as a safe house for elite institute coursers, on the hunt for escape since. Now it's just used to seduce sexy strangers into some sucky fucky. Now this stylish apartment includes over 35 new workshop items, new clothing outfits, and a new quest. Now the new workshop items can be accessed in the workshop menu as soon as you completed the quest. As well, you're gonna have yourself a brand new player home once this quest comes to fruition. Also, you can decorate the interior of the penthouse the way you want it, rearranging furniture and adding new decorations and whatnot, really making this player home completely unique to you. The name of the quest in order to get started is called Early Retirement. Now this item costs 600 credits to purchase in the Creation Club, which is about $6.50 American, which is on the pricier side of the Creation Club mods. However, that doesn't stop it from being a really cool addition to the game. Now if you really enjoy player homes and settlement building in Fallout 4, then $6 to $7 isn't going to feel like it breaks the bank. However, if you don't like settlement building or player homes in Fallout 4, then this mod is going to feel massively overpriced. Either way, it's a really unique mod that adds a fun quest, a cool player home, and some awesome new furniture items to the workshop menu. I rate this mod two unlikely lovers being caught red-handed. I swear, it was just the tip. At number 9, we've got Heavy Incinerator by Chris Takashi. Now this mod adds the Heavy Incinerator to Fallout, which apparently was developed for Enclave Troopers. But all I know is how this mod makes me feel. It makes me feel like Mario when he gets his lips on one of them fire flowers, and he's able to blaze fireballs at those creepy turtles and those evil Goomba f**ks. Now this weapon is definitely immersive, as it almost feels like a variation of the Vanilla Flamer. However, aesthetically speaking, this weapon is sure to even make fire-breathing dragons wet in their panties. Whatever that means. It looks aggressive, but it also fits well with Fallout 4's overall theme. Now, if you want this weapon, then it can be acquired by completing the quest Crucible, which is a pretty fun quest and feels rewarding to get this weapon upon completion. Now, this quest will be available as soon as the mod is installed. This weapon costs about 400 credits in the Creation Club, which works out to be about $4 American. Again, to me, this seems a bit pricey for one weapon in a quest to acquire it. However, this is a really awesome weapon mod, and it's a ton of fun to use in the game. Now, I'm sure if this weapon is something you feel you're going to get a lot of use out of in Fallout 4, then $4 isn't a financial setback that you're going to feel is overwhelming. However, I'll still let you guys be the judge. I rate this mod one goose that thinks it's a traffic cop. Sir, do you know why I pulled you over? I'm gonna need you to step out of the car and throw bread in my mouth, please, sir. At number eight, we've got the Anti-Material Rifle by Stefan Engdahl, AKA AssXAss. Now this weapon mod tickles my butthole in ways that only my therapist will ever fully understand. This mod adds the iconic long-range sniper rifle from Fallout New Vegas to Fallout 4, with all new custom meshes, textures, and animations. This rifle mod really pops out of the screen, but like in a good way. Now these custom meshes are so nice, they make my eyes pregnant with visual joy babies. Which is kind of weird, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. Now this weapon mod is obtained through the quest Paper Mirror, which was created by Chris Takashi. 
who is another mod author. The quest adds a nice little adventure to the game and makes this weapon feel pretty rewarding when it's all said and done. Now the rifle itself has a few customization options, but nothing too crazy. However, it does let you tweak it a bit and make it feel like your own, so that's kinda nice. Now this mod costs 400 credits in the Creation Club, which for the sake of simple math works out to be about $4 American. Now the weapon with the quest are both really great and definitely worthy of a monetary valuation. However, $4 can still feel a bit expensive for a single weapon mod. However, if you are going to spend $4 on a weapon mod, then definitely make it this weapon mod. As Stefan and Chris did a great job bringing this Fallout classic to life in Fallout 4. I rate this mod one fox photographing the chickens in the hen house. That's it. That's it. Work it, ladies. Yeah, work it. Yeah. Oh my god, you're naughty. That's it. Unbutton, unbutton your shirt a little bit. Yeah. Can you go ahead and pull your butt apart for me, Dottie, or, or is that asking a little too much? At number seven, we've got Captain Cosmos by Kyle Oliver Gibson, aka Sovereign Walrus. Now, Captain Cosmos is not to be confused with Captain Crunch, who is the mastermind behind the milky, wet, delicious, buoyant little crackers that feel good in my gullet. Now, this mod isn't sponsored by Captain Crunch cereal. I just really like floating cookies in my mouth. They're delicious. And they're pretty much on my mind all the time. Now, Captain Cosmos is a TV show in the Fallout universe, so needless to say, this mod is pretty immersive. This mod adds a unique weapon, outfit, and set of power armor to Fallout 4. The power armor definitely looks unique and gives off a real Fallout vibe, and it comes with some customization options as well to really change up its look in the game. It's got multiple colors and even a few aesthetic customizations to really make it stand out. Now, the space outfit that's added will actually make your character jump a little bit higher, like a really impressive pair of Jordans. But the bread and butter of this mod definitely has to be the new weapon mod, which is functionally and visually completely unique for Fallout 4. Now this weapon is a lot of fun to use in the game, and I can honestly say it's gotten me out of some tight situations, if you know what I mean. Butt stuff. The gun also has some really cool customization options, which can change up its look and function in the game. So you can really create your own unique space blaster in Fallout 4. Now all of the armors and the weapon can be obtained by completing the quest Captain Cosmos, which is a fun little quest and definitely helps to round out this Creation Club mod. Now this mod costs 700 credits, which is about $8 American. Although this mod is by far one of the nicest Creation Club mods I've seen, the $8 price tag can still feel a bit steep considering what people paid for DLC add-ons. And the fact that the Nexus mods are f***ing free. However, the armor, weapon, and outfits are all great, and the weapon itself adds a whole lot of fun to the game. Now, $8 is a big ass, but this mod is definitely a lot of fun. So for me, $8 was worth it. I rate this mod one giant bear that thinks he's super sneaky. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna get you. You just wait. What do you mean you can see me? At number six, we've got the Solar Cannon by Jose McCallum, aka Shoe Burglar. This mod is brought to you by the letter S for spoofy, which is a word I just made up. But this mod makes me blow a spoofy load in my spandex underwear every time I look directly at it. This mod adds the solar cannon to Fallout 4. The weapon itself looks really cool and adds a new type of energy weapon to the game. The weapon looks completely unique, but still fits the overall aesthetic of Fallout 4. Now, it doesn't have a ton of customization options, but it does let you change a few things so you can kind of give it your own personal touch in the game. And I definitely think this weapon is a lot of fun to use in the game. Now, in order to obtain this weapon, you'll first have to complete a decent-sized quest called Burned on the River, which was created by none other than Chris Takashi, who is another mod author. Now the quest is a lot of fun to do and again makes this weapon feel that much more rewarding when you complete it. Now the weapon and the quest definitely make this weapon mod a worthwhile addition to the game. Now the mod itself costs about 400 credits, which again is about $4 American, which again fits the Creation Club's theme of feeling a bit overpriced. Now this mod definitely deserves to be monetized, but when comparing this mod to previous DLCs that cost $20, it doesn't always feel like we're getting one-fifth of the content. However, even though $4 can feel like a lot for one weapon, this weapon along with its quest can add a lot of fun to Fallout 4. So it's not a purchase that I regret in the least. I rate this mod one guy who tried to get the Night King's autograph. He said no. At number five, we've got Tunnel Snake's Rule by Adam Ridsdale, AKA the Rizzler. Do you guys remember the Tunnel Snakes from Fallout 3 and how hip and cool they were in their leather jackets with their greasy hair and their silky smooth nutsacks? I mean, 
What? Anyways, well, guess what? Their legacy lived on even after their leader's mom got bodied by a radroach, which is pretty impressive in my book. Pretty impressive indeed. Now, this mod adds the original Fallout 10mm pistol and a new Tunnel Snakes jacket to Fallout 4. The 10mm pistol looks wicked aesthetically speaking, and there's even a custom variant of it, which I think is the tits. Now, there are a few mods on the Nexus adding the 10mm pistol to Fallout 4, but this mod definitely is top notch in my book. The pistol also comes with a few customization options, which allow you to change it up in the game. Nothing crazy, but it still gives you an adequate amount of diversity. Now, the Tumble Snakes jacket isn't anything to call home about, but it is sure to hit your nostalgia G spot if that's what you're going for. Now, in order to obtain the jacket and the new pistol, you'll have to complete a quest called Tunnel Snakes Rule, which will basically have you on a scavenger hunt where you'll find clues and go to the next location. There are a few terminals which give details on what happened to the Tunnel Snakes and how they ended up in Boston, which is pretty cool, but other than that, the quest is pretty plain Jane. This Creation Club mod costs 500 credits, which is about $5.50 American. Again, the price tag for this mod can feel a bit overpriced. At times, I definitely feel like a broken record in this video. But it's true, $5.50 for a single weapon and jacket and a small quest doesn't feel like you're getting enough bang for your buck. Now, if you threw in a couple Bud Lights with it, I'd feel a whole lot better about this purchase. However, the mod author did do an awesome job on the 10mm pistol and the Tunnel Snakes jacket. And if you're okay with the price tag, then this is definitely an awesome addition to Fallout 4. I rate this mod one guy playing soccer for the very first time. Did you guys see that? The guy kicked a ball right in my face. Lucky for me, I was able to dive out of the way because that could have caused some serious damage. At number four, we've got the Modular Military Backpack by Rob Vogel, AKA Fading Signal. Now, I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just stare at the Soul Survivor, baffled at where he puts all his shit. He's running around in skinny jeans, yet he's got a small military supply chain smuggled up his butt cheeks or something. Like where the f did he just pull that fat man from? Honestly, I am legitimately curious where he was hiding that thing this entire time. He's in a t-shirt and tidy whities Doesn't really leave a lot of storage space for one of them big boy weapons, now does it? Now this mod mitigates that discrepancy and makes carrying lots of stuff in Fallout seem a little more realistic. This mod adds a modular military backpack to the game with over 30 different add-on pieces, patches, and colors to choose from. It also increases carry weight and there are multiple bonuses for surviving even in the harshest wasteland conditions. The backpacks look fantastic, are realistic, and are functionally awesome in the game. This is one of those mods that just makes so much sense, you wonder why it wasn't in the game to begin with. The backpacks are fully customizable, so you can really make them fit your character's unique playstyle. Now the backpack itself will be deposited in your inventory as soon as you download this mod. Now these backpacks are immersive, and in a lot of ways, if this mod were on the Nexus, I would view it as a must-have mod. However, this mod comes with a price tag, and that price tag is 400 credits, which works out again to be about $4 American. Now this is one of the only mods on the Creation Club I feel like you get adequate bang for your buck. This mod adds a whole new clothing item to the game with tons of customization options and functionality changes that make your playthrough more immersive and enjoyable. Now to me, $4 is definitely worth it for this mod. However, if you still think that $4 is a bit much for backpacks, I wouldn't poop in your hand for it. I surely wouldn't. I rate this mod one bird that's bottling up a lot of intense aggression. Get the banana out of my face! It doesn't look anything like me! At number three, we've got the Prototype Goss Rifle by Bethesda. Now, the word prototype actually makes me nervous because sometimes it says prototype on the bottle and you think that it's FDA approved and two hours later, you got your tits pressed against the cafe window screaming at people because they're eating their food too fast. However, with that said, this is the good kind of prototype. I know because I can feel it in my Bojangles. This mod adds the prototype Goss rifle from previous Fallout games to Fallout 4. This rifle uses electromagnetic induction to shoot a projectile at a tremendous speed. How fast you're wondering? Like super fast, that's how fast. Need I say more? No, I need not. It in essence is a marksman's best friend. This weapon mod looks good and definitely fits the world perfectly. Now there aren't a ton of customization options for this weapon, but there are some, and for the most part they make sense. If you want to acquire this weapon, you'll get it by completing the quest, Call the Prototype, once the mod is installed. However, the quest really isn't a quest. It just has you going to where the weapon is located and getting it. So I don't know how Bethesda justified that as a quest, but 
There it is. Now this mod will set you back 400 credits, which is again $4 American. And if I'm being honest, this weapon definitely feels overpriced. The weapon itself looks and functions great in the game, as it's from previous Fallout games and it's also very immersive. However, it's not adding anything we haven't seen to the Gauss Rifle, and the quest for it is not the greatest. So basically you're paying $4 for one new weapon, which by comparing it to the price of DLC seems massively overvalued. However, it is a fun mod, and if you miss the Gauss Rifle from previous Fallout games, then $4 is what it's going to set you back. I rate this mod one bear that makes a terrible CSI murder victim. Sorry Paul, just uh, one more question. What if I breathe too hard by mistake? Just keep going? Just keep- oh, just, we're just gonna wing it? Okay. Alright, neat. And what's my motivation? Oh, I'm dead. Right. I'm dead. I'm super dead. And number two, we've got the Handmade Shotgun by Stefan Engdahl, aka Ass. I once made my own Handmade Shotgun. However, when I pulled the trigger, a little gerbil covered in pickle juice crawled out of the barrel and gave me the finger. Suffice it to say, it didn't work as intended. No, it did not. I still have nightmares about that moment, actually. This mod adds a handmade shotgun to Fallout 4. It's crafted using pipes, springs, and a healthy dose of psychotic self-reliance. The weapon itself looks great and the homemade design makes you feel like you're in the post-apocalypse. In terms of customization, there isn't a lot, but you can still change a couple of things to give it a personal touch. Now this weapon will be deposited in your inventory right away, and it will also appear in the world space on enemies and at vendors in case you lose the one you got for free right out of the gate, as it has been added to the respective leveled lists. This Creation Club mod costs 200 credits, which is about $2.50 American, and honestly I feel like that's a pretty fair price for a single weapon mod in Fallout 4 of such high quality. The mod author who created this mod is known for high quality weapon mods, and this shotgun definitely fits the bill. $2.50 was definitely a price I was okay paying for a single weapon mod of this quality. But again, I'll let you guys be the judge. I rate this mod one photo of Joaquin Phoenix after he watched The Dark Knight. At number 1, we've got Slocum Joe's by Rob Vogel, aka Fading Signal. Did you ever think to yourself, you know what this settlement could use? A donut shop. Just think of all those honey glazed sprinkles protruding out of those delicious round cakes. I mean, just thinking about it makes me want to jizz all over this f***ing room! On the walls and the carpet and even this lamp! Yeah! That's right, even the lamps are gonna get it because of this mod! This mod brings some delicious fun to the wasteland with Slocum Joe's Coffee and Donuts Workshop Pack, featuring over 75 new items including new architecture, signs, lights, decorations, and new animated food crafting stations, allowing you to make your favorite pre-war donut and coffee flavors. You can also assign vendors to run your shop while you're away, that way everyone will get their fill of sugary treats. It also adds two brand new power armor paint jobs that are sure to make you look like a f***ing idiot as you'll definitely have a hard time going around unnoticed when you're bright pink covered with a diverse assortment of sprinkles. Now being bedazzled as f might be fun and all, but it's a great way to get shot in the post-apocalypse. Just an FYI. This mod costs 600 credits, which is about $6.50 American. And it's also $5 more than I used to charge for hand jobs. I'm not gay, but I'm not gonna say no to money, right? What do I look like, a dummy? Also, $6.50 is about how much you paid for the Wasteland Workshop DLC. Although this mod is a lot of fun to use, and the mod author did an excellent job on all the new assets as well as the new animated food crafting stations, this mod still feels a little overpriced in comparison to the DLC. However, if building and making settlements is something you really enjoy in Fallout 4, then this mod will definitely feel like it's worth the $6 to $7, as it adds a lot of new workshop items. Now, if you want to start using the workshop items, then you'll first have to complete a quest once the mod is downloaded. However, the quest is pretty straightforward and just has you going to a few different locations and killing an enemy or two. The quest is called Slocum Joe's and will be available right away after downloading this mod. I rate this mod one house pet that got lost between the cushions. The things I've seen and heard in there. Thanks again for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, be sure to bitch slap that subscribe button like it's three weeks behind on your rent. Bitch! Where's the money, bitch? Where's the money? Where is it? Also, go ahead and hit that bell icon too, because apparently YouTube thought there should be extra steps. Why not, right? I'd like to subscribe, but first I have to click this and this and do this. Oh, it needs an email. All right, and this. Okay, just tell me when he's uploading. Fuck. Once you do all that, if you're lucky, at the stroke of midnight, a tiny little average baiter's fairy might come and tickle your butthole.
I hope to see you all again next time, and remember to keep on average baiting, baby.